Oh, I assure you, it's quite based. Yeah! Based Phoenix! Mm. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Apollo Justice. It has been a while. Um, and by a while, I mean seven days, which for me is a while. I don't tend to do too much um, in my life, so it was nice to take a little break and just kind of recharge. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's been kind of overwhelming. I've been doing YouTube kind of non-stop, really, for like six months and taking a few breaks here and there, but you know when you're just like really convinced that your footage should be seeing more, like not necessarily the Apollo Justice stuff, I've realized that like visual novel let's plays are kind of lower down the list of like fun priorities for everyone to watch, but like, I don't know, and I do a lot of Spider-Man stuff and it's hard to see that stuff not do so well when I feel like it's stuff that no one else is doing. But you know what, that stuff is probably best saved for my therapist and uh, why don't we just get into some Apollo Justice, huh? The of sensed in that man, that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeped in through the window to the hideout. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and white, holding a bottle in his hand. I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time. And so I left. That's when the call from right came. So, you witnessed the murder! For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team. Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous to your client. What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. Hmm? And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, m Mr. Wright! You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity. Right, Apollo? Oh, uh... Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examinations, not the defendant. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. Oh, this trial is getting weirder and weirder. Oh, baby, that's just a taste. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Get ready for the Orca in Exodus 35. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> That man! You mean, Mr. Smith! He was different from the other customers, his aura, shall we say. I knew he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. So then you knew the true nature of your client's job? Of course, but I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Well, it, it makes sense that he'd know. They were friends, after all. Worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see. What happened then? Oh, Gavin, you smug son of a bitch. The little window. You mean the one used to keep watch the upstairs? What? <laughs> you mean the one to. <laughs> I can't speak. Warm up my face. Alright. You mean the one used to keep watch up the stairs? Yes, a relic of the ancient past. The black market has used it, I believe. Why did you go through the trouble of peeking in through the window? Wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room? I didn't want to upset White, you see. Upset, Mr. Wright? Yes, what if my fears had been unfounded? I'd be walking in on their march, bad form, to say the least. Mm, so far, everything he's saying makes sense. How do you know it was right after the murder? Really, no need to shout justice. Oh. I was just getting to that part in my testimony. 
Ah, there he is. The coolest defense in the West we know and love. Even when you're standing up there on the witness stand. Some things never change. I was afraid you changed too, right? But you haven't. You and that overbearing personality of yours. Friends like these, who needs enemies? Yeah, I mean, I feel like at this point, they really should just hate fuck each other. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, that's just... Oh, the Phoenix has such radiant bisexual energy, and this is clearly, like, the femiest femboy. Like, look at that cravat. The, he's fooling no one. No one. <laughs> By photo, you mean the second photograph of the crime scene? Precisely. You see, he wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head when he was dead. And then Mr. Wright came along and replaced his hat. Can you describe the scene of the crime for us? A bald head, unconscious girl, and Wright. <laughs> I feel like that's just a very terrible Chronicles of Narnia book. <laughs> Those were the only three at the crime scene. Yes, as far as I saw, at least. Then we're back where we started. The killer was the defendant. Phoenix Wright, who else could it have been? But, why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend the fight. Even after seeing what I've seen, I could not abandon my friend. Mm. Objection! There must have been someone else there at the moment of the crime! Justice. I just said I saw no one. Not a soul. But, but, that goes against what Mr. Wright said! Ah uh, yes, this mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question then. Tell me. What possible reason did the real killer have to swap cards in the victim's hand? Huh? Hmm? Perhaps you can show us the reason why such a thing would be necessary. How can I show something I can't even find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. The fifth ace? Right. Well, Mr. Justice. The question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? See, we can. We can point to a reason. I feel like I kind of want to get the lowdown on the other statements first. So, you know what? We'll come back here real quick. Is that that's what we're going to do? Not yet. No, uh, not yet, Your Honor. Not yet? Ha! Pathetic! <laughs> I know someone else has... I say someone else, oh my god, just criminating myself there. I was gonna say, I know someone out there has a Winston Payne fetish. It might be me. I might have just self described myself. I know someone else out there that's just hearing them going, PATHETIC! And just having the time of their lives. I mean, look at that smile. That's not the smile of a sexually prude man. <laughs> oh god, what am I saying? I mean, Payne isn't his name, right? <laughs> No pain, no gain, baby! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> I cracked myself up. You know what's important? That if you're the only person laughing at your own joke, it's still it's still good to acknowledge that you find yourself funny. Like it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> not yet! Try not ever! Hmm. Well, Mr. Gavin. Oh, I'm willing to wait for as long as it takes. Great! I don't even know what the heck I'm looking for! Apollo. Uh, yes, sir! Don't forget, you already know the answer. You just don't realize it yet. I love this side-on sprite of Phoenix there. I don't know what it is. That, that seeing these sprites in HD is so much more rewarding than seeing like the original Ace Attorney Trilogy's sprites in HD because then they just felt like weird and upscaled. These are more detailed and I felt like the colours are sharper and the design is stronger for this kind of, uh, I guess, upscaling. I don't know, I don't know. What do y'all think? I... 
already know the answer? Take a moment to think it over again. Okay? Oh shit, okay. Um... Wait, no. We still have a couple sentences. Alright, let's go. Wouldn't it have been better to wait for the police to arrive? Remember, though, by that time I was already a right defense attorney. It wouldn't do for me to become part of the investigation. Well, that has never stopped a lawyer in the right and co-law offices before. Constantly just witnessing murders and then just becoming the lawyer of that situation. <laughs> that makes sense. Or does it? Oh, I'm confused. Well, what happened next? Where were you when the phone call Blech. Where were you when the phone call came? I had already left the ball God, I cannot speak. Meow, meow, meow. I had already left the Borscht Ball Club by that time. On the phone he asked me to defend him. Naturally, I was surprised. I accepted, however, I could not abandon him. So kind of you. Hmm. So far, everything jives with Mr. Wright's testimony, I think. I can't believe I just used the word jive. I mean, am I gonna go to the bebop? The bebop hang at the town square with the flickety flax and the jizzity jabs? <laughs> what am I saying? I don't know why I thought that was a funny bit. But you know what? I stand by it. I stand by it, everyone. <laughs> Is it going to be a problem for you to cross-examine your own boss? I... I'm fine! Who is it that taught me never to pull punches in cross-examination? It was you, Mr. Gavin! I learned it from watching you! I learned it from watching you! <laughs> okay, alright. Where are we at? Uh, it was dead. I think it was this one. Right? Must present some evidence. Blah, 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 blah. Objection! Yes, objection. Gooby, gooby, gooby. Yes, we can. It's now or never. The defense would like to present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? All right, well... Might be something to do with this. My reason is, uh, this. Is that an ace? Why? Why it's got blood on it, right next to the spade. Wha wha what? This is insane. Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could could this be? Could this be the missing fifth ace? In inconceivable. How could you? What are you doing with that card? Uh, well, that's that's the thing. Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It's just a fishy card for some fishy girl. Oh, that card. It's mine. That is. I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade, after all. No, no! Oh, impossible! Unacceptable! The court can't accept this evidence as a fraud! A fraud? How can you be so sure? What? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. <gasps> Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for? For the killer to take the card from the crime scene. Where are you going with this? Take another look at the photo, and at the victim's head. Hand? Head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell to the floor, and a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. 
The killer then took the car to hide the blood. Regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right. Regardless of how you faced it the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. F what are you talking about? You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now, I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. Objection! Th this is baseless conjecture! Baseless! Oh, I assure you, it's quite based. Yeah! Based Phoenix! Mm, 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 mm. What? It's amazing, really, how a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Uh, yes? Try picturing the scene of the crime in your head. Don't, don't use this diagram that I've got. I've got a really specific, like you can go right inside of this diagram, but you're not allowed to use it, Apollo, okay? If you look at my diagram, I will take your attorney's badge. I'll do it. I've given up so many, I mean one, specifically one, but it, let me tell you, the person who gave it up was not happy, it was me, I lost mine. I'm, I'm, I, 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 okay, you can look at the diagram. <laughs> what am I saying? Well, these little bits. I, I hope you guys enjoy these little bits that I do. I, I don't know. I enjoy doing them. I'm probably, even if you don't, I'm probably not going to stop. So, uh, onwards, I guess. Um. <laughs> the murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And before the killer swapped a card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this... There is one decisive problem with this scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on a card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? The victims? The killers? The witnesses? The second witnesses? Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? Oh god. Um... I don't know. I don't actually know. That's not great, is it? Um, <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, Goober. Because honestly, I don't know. The second witness's position is the problem! The second witness? That would be Mr. Gavin, yes? The second witness's position is far less problematic than yours right now. Justice. Or perhaps perilous is a better word. Oh, I cannot see what the bloodstained card has to do with the second witness's location. I'm afraid you're more in pen. <coughs> God, these voices. I'm afraid you're more than in pen or peril of a penalty this time. All right, let's save it real quick. No fucking around, eh? I mean, a little fucking around, just the healthy amount. Your Honor, one more chance, please. I suppose. Do think it over, Mr. Justice. And let's keep it simple, shall we? Blah, blah, blah. Victim, the killer, witnesses, second witness. Uh, whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? I guess this goober? I don't really know. Well, isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look, the victim was struck on his head, sending him back in the chair. And you think any blood would fall behind the body, not onto the table in front of him. Oh. Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, the blood would fall onto the floor, not the cards. Why, that's right. So what does this mean? Incidentally, we were sitting in swivel chairs. Swivel chair? Oh, man. Apollo, try turning the chair around. Ooh. Ooh. Your boop. The chair was facing the other way? It would have to be. 
So, we have to assume that at the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing a scene in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around! Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We now know the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But this creates another significant contradiction. Give me one second before I do Winston Payne's voice, I definitely need some more. Oh. Okay. One sec. A again? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses? I am definitely going to save it, because despite having played this case like a billion times, I'm never, I never <laughs> remember what the actual solutions are. That's so funny. Um... This is the killer, right? The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front, sitting where his indicator currently is? I would think it'd be quite hard, yes. Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense! Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of a game? Well, I believe a sufficient reason will soon come to light. What? what? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting here as shown, where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it on the diagram. W what But, but... There's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry. Let's think it through and see what we find. We know the victim was facing toward the wall at the scene of the crime. The time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Where would the killer have to be standing to strike our victim from the front? And again, this is one of those things where, like, you know, you remove all the other possibilities, the only thing remaining has to be the truth, right? As our old boy Herlock Sholmes would say. The killer had to be standing, well, uh, here! You get points for flair, but that's about all you get. Ack. Oh, I thought I was on to something there, too. I hardly need to point out that standing there would be impossible. The victim is facing a solid cupboard. Or are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit him from above? Ha! Well, lucky. No bubba. Sorry, <laughs> Lucky's messing with these uh, fairy lights that we've got around the flat, which make the flat look so cute, by the way. Didn't realize how much fairy lights can really just transform a space. Like... We have coloured lighting because I, I have sensory issues, so I really enjoy having coloured lighting so I can have red lighting in the evening, which helps my brain. Um, and yeah, just adding fairy lights to the whole situation, it just makes it everything feel so, like, oh, homey. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's one of those things you don't realise you need until you don't, until you see it and you're like, oh, wow, yeah, no, I needed this. <laughs> it's simple logic, really. If this was the only place the killer could have been standing... Then that means that, at the very moment of the crime... Wait! I know! At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there! Lucky! Lucky! <laughs> good monkey, good monkey. <laughs> Lucky likes to climb up on the TV and uh, distract me when I'm reading. Don't you, Baba? Yeah, you do, don't you? Good monkey. <laughs> Little goober. Wha what's this now? Oh, lucky you're in the way. <laughs> I mean, that's the only explanation, right, Mr. Gavin? <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry, this is a bit disruptive, because Lucky is now currently climbing on top of the TV. My girlfriend has rushed in to save the day. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Come and sit, baby. Come and sit. Hey? You little goob, aren't you? Who's your little goob? He's your little troublemaker. I mean, that's the thing about little bubs, is that they'll cause trouble. Because what rhymes with trouble? Bubble, you know? It's just all. Yeah! <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, 
All right, back to, <laughs> to the actual thing we're doing here. I mean, that's the only explanation. Right, Mr. Gavin? Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to examine the cupboard and the hideout immediately! Bailiff, send a team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Oh, Your Honor. What? There is one more thing your men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. Hmm? Hmm, yes, I see. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. But let's forge ahead here while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the scene of the crime, then this cupboard wasn't here. Which means... Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Bonk. Thank you. Phoenix, where did you get this diagram from? This is just an incredibly interactive piece of media that you've just got ready to go here. Did you, like, go into Blender when you were arrested? Like, did you use the police computer to just, like, quickly map out a whole thing? Because this is, this is very impressive. It's just questions you got to ask when you're doing a Let's Play. <laughs> As you can see, the cupboard was the problem. At the time of the murder, it has to have been as shown here. Now everything is in place to reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my. What's this? Well, what is it now? Look at the diagram of this crime scene once more. It appears we found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh, dang! Notice something, Apollo? Our line of deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Justice, please point out the new contradicting indicator. Is it the victim, the killer, the witness, the second witness? Which indicator in this diagram contradicts what we know about the crime scene? What do you think, viewers? Can you see it? I think it's this one. Take that! Um, about this cupboard! Are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would completely cover up the window to the stairs! Oh! That's right! Someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in! Someone like Mr. Gavin! What? What did you say? Oh, is the coolest defense in the West losing his cool? Don't expect me to play along with your little game, Vite. Well, it's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was, while the window to that room was blocked by a cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain to the court Exactly where did you witness the crime scene from? Excuse me, your honor. Order, this is a court of law and I will have order. We we just now received word from our investigative team at the Borst Bowl Club. They've examined the cupboard in the hideout, your honor. Oh, and what did they find? Well, your honor, it turns out there is a secret passage behind it. What? Lucky, no bubba. She's gone for it again. <laughs> ah yes, I believe I mentioned something of the sort before. This is one of the tricks to our room that many of our regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that, now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal goings-on. Never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So, the room has a secret passage. Where does it go? The other side connects to the restaurant above. Uh, River? Baby? Sorry, I've got to get Riffin to take Lucky out. She's being a little troublemaker. Riff, will you take Lucky in the other room with you? <laughs> oh, 
they're so cute. I love them so much. <laughs> the other side. No. Oh. oh. Did you like my uh, Apollo impression? I I don't think I did actually. To be fair, let's just move on. <laughs> the other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses could get away from the cops and enjoy a cold bowl of borscht, no doubt. Just like our killer. You see where our line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it, but I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card for the last hand. Oh, that's a very loud siren. I apologize, everyone. Fucking pigs. Got fucked. Fucking cops. Ugh. At the time of the murder, the window was blocked, and the victim's hat was only off of his head for the few minutes between Mr. Smith's murder and Mr. Wright's return from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout! Well, Mr. Gavin? Come on, say something. Hmm, dare I ask what really happened that night? Actually, I think we can probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with destiny. There he crouched, hidden in the secret passageway behind the cupboard, holding his breath, waiting for just the right moment. Then the chance came, and he took it! Ah! Why did you do that? We do, I can help. Miss Ogre Orly was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. But his time was soon to come. Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops, leaving Mr. Shaddy Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Then our killer stepped out from the secret passage and into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. He wheeled his chair around to look and... After the deed was done, the criminal must have seen the blood on the card. He would have, of course, realized the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story of the crime. Too bad for him! He didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have noticed the cards on the floor. And the fact that they... WERE ALL RED! break I think. Woo! It's gonna be a long episode today folks I think. Oh, Might split it up into two. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Although I don't know if we're done yet. So we'll see. Well it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. I'm truly truly sorry I had to see this day come. Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin! Mr. Payne! Yark! Uh, um, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Yark! <laughs> oh, this game's so gooby. I haven't mentioned how much I hate the color of his suit either. It's it's so bad. Lime green? Who gave that to you, Winston? And what did you do to them to make them do that? Oh, ooh, not a nice color. The prosecution will continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. Quack! Believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But I'm afraid circumstances call for me to warrant an issue for your arrest. Immediately. Objection! Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics first hand. 
Your point, Mr. Gavin. Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber would be taken in by such a low-grade parlor trick. Um, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion. This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proven anyone's guilt here, or innocence here. What he has done is use illegal evidence to put the blame on someone else. And not just anyone, but me, his own defense attorney. There are illegal evidence? Objection! Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin. Is there still any reason at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course. This bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking! How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the word of a... The word of a... The word of a... And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Payne? Actually, yes! The fingerprints on the bottle were, uh... Upside down! I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. The court and this case demand an explanation. I can think of only one reason why one would hold a bottle upside down. And that is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. Well, your honor? Mm. Oh, see how the codfish squims, squims, squirms to the last. Well, Apollo? Y y yes Your boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still. But I'm sure you can come up with a suitable explanation. Just like that. Uh, y yeah! Just like what?! Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down, other than to- Don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Um, is there really another?! Take another look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there, in plain sight. Um, how about you just say the answer in plain words? You know, words from your mouth. Say them, I hear them, and then I say them back. No? You're just gonna keep staring at me? Okay. It would be hasty to deliver a verdict with unanswered questions, indeed. Well, Mr. Justice. Mr. Gavin said that the court and this case demand an explanation. Don't worry. Justice won't leave until justice is done! Perhaps the defense would like to enlighten the court. What evidence do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle are upside down? What do you reckon, viewers? What do we got? Did you guess it? It's actually easier to show you than explain, Your Honor. Place that bottle on the floor, next to your chair. Excuse me, on the floor? Yes. Now, reach down and pick it up. Without getting off your chair. Ow! See? You naturally go to pick the bottle up by its neck. With your fingers upside down! Look at this photograph taken on the night of the murder. The defendant, Mr. Wright, sat here, playing piano, bottles of grape juice on the floor to the side of his piano bench. He would have naturally picked the bottles up upside down several times. Wow, I can't believe it was that simple. Recall our dinner that evening, Christoph. I was drinking my usual juice then too. Basically, you used the bottle on the table to do the deed, but then you must have remembered. So you went and picked up one of the bottles from under the piano. And you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like the murder weapon! Order, order, order! What do you have to say to these charges, Mr. Gavin? <coughs> Fascinating. So this is the legendary attorney's fame tactic of misdirection. What? You claim that I switched the bottle? Where is your proof? Uh, pr proof 
What about that, sir? As I thought, more baseless conjecture. I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite empty. Objection! I wouldn't be so sure about that. Oh. Your Honor, when you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, do you recall I requested an additional investigation? Oh yes, I have your memo about that right here. Retrieve the bottles from under the piano at the Borscht Bowl Club. And here's one of the bottles in question. Humph, what you going to do dust that for fingerprints too? I would be surprised if anyone that but his. Mr. Gavin probably wouldn't make such a novice mistake, true. That bottle won't bear a trace of anything. Say, Apollo. I I yes Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? But, but why? Just humor me. Mr. Wright. That bottle will solve this case. Once and for all. What? That's some bottle. Hmm. What do we got? Ooh, what's that? What's that in there? Ooh, I disagree. I think there's a very obvious clue right there. <gasps> there's something inside the bottle! <gasps> what's this? That's that card. It can't be! Record that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment. Uh, Miss Olga Orly! Yes, our little swindling Dvoshka. That night I planted the card like I was supposed to, and Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to, and then Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone! The trap failed! Wait, wait! This isn't. You're telling me that this is. The planted card you disposed of! The one you mentioned in this piece of testimony! I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card. Before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. The Five of Hearts. This is the card! The bottles are swapped, and the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You, Mr. Christoph Gavin! That is all. Is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Fart? Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's patch seven years ago. My past is like my logic. Straight and true. Ooh, I don't think straight is the right question. Is the right word there? <laughs> Maybe uh, hella gay and true. <laughs> Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tete a tete fight. This, this is insane! What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anyone? <laughs> Winston, shut the fuck up. Go home. <laughs> I believe this time we've finally come to the end of our trial. Mr. Payne, do you have a report for us on Christoph Gavin? He's admitted everything. We're processing his arrest now. I see. Still, one has to wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a connection to the victim, did he? Oh, none that we know of. Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. 
about this victim, Mr. Shadi Smith. His occupation was listed as Traveler, which we all know means Romani, but we refuse to say the word Romani because we are racists. <laughs> it's true though. Just say Romani. Like, just, you know? An odd profession to be sure. And that is all we know about him. I'll arrange a follow up investigation, Your Honor. Good. Mr. Wright. Yes? Seven years, and you still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man with much significance for me, both as a friend and a lawyer. He was extremely talented, to be sure. I needed two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated, this courtroom. The second was a man who would tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney. You, Apollo. Me? This is a dark time for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought on by our very own initial trial system. We have to set it right. Mr. Wright! Our work lies ahead of us, and I, for one, am looking forward to it. Well, this seems like a good time to announce a verdict. This court finds the defendant Mr. Phoenix Wright. Court is adjourned. April 20th, 4.28 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Thanks, Apollo. You came through, just like I thought you would. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a thing in there. It was you who cornered Mr. Ga- The killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too today, didn't you? Your ability. Ability? Yes. A sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means... I have one question for the witness, then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course it's true. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? What... What was that, Mr. Wright? You'll have to find the answer to that question yourself. The answer... Right. Today was full of questions without answers. Most of them about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have to commit murder? Perhaps you'll learn that in the days to come. Huh? Wait, you, you don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Huh? Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I met the girl whose picture is in your locket. Your daughter, right? That's right. She's my daughter. You know, you were right about this locket. Eh? I took this off his neck the night he died. But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. So the truth is, this locket really did belong to him. Wait, but that's perjury! You testified! You said that that locket was yours! I said no such thing, actually. Huh? I merely said that it was a locket with my daughter's picture inside. A subtle distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. And it's the truth. Wait, but then... Why? Why was the victim wearing a locket with a picture of your daughter inside it? Sometimes the straightest path to the truth isn't the best one. Give it time. Ask Edgeworth. <laughs> You're still just getting started with your career. Speaking of which, I may be out of a job. I work for Gavin Law Offices, after all. I still can't believe I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. Apollo. Yes? How about coming to work for me? Eh? You mean, at the Bright & Co. Law Offices? I mean, there's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know it! I can't imagine that to be true, but... 
Wait, but didn't you... You're, you're not, uh... Oh, I turned in my badge, yes. I'm not an attorney anymore. That incident seven years ago. That legendary trial. And at the middle of it all was one man, Phoenix Wright. The case reached its sad conclusion, and he left law for good. Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I'm not qualified to stand in a court of law, I'm afraid. Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a single piece of forged evidence. Forged evidence? What are you talking about? I'm talking about evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's trick. Huh. One piece of evidence did strike me as odd, it's true. It just seemed, well, too perfect. And I'll bet this was the forged evidence. Take that! You mean this, don't you? I got this from your, uh, your, your daughter, Mr. Wright. Yes. That card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. Leaving the wrong card in its place. Luckily for us. So court can't accept this evidence, it's a fraud! A fraud? How can you be so sure? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer! My verdict was already handed down seven years ago. Then... you really... Yes, I forged this card. One look at the crime scene should have told you it wasn't real. But... but you can't do something like that and still call yourself an attorney! Who's calling themselves an attorney, Apollo? So it's true. The rumor is true. Seven years ago. None of that matters much now, does it? I... I punched him! It's your story from here on out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. My office's address. Drop in, if you like. Mr. Wright. Oh, about your uppercut. Try yelling. Take that. Next time. Find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo. Thanks for today. I had a good time. And with that, Mr. Wright walked out of the door. And that's how my first trial ended. A lot of mysteries went unsolved. And, at the time... I had no idea that they were all related. Every mystery that day, <coughs> connected by a single thread of logic. And I'd find that out soon enough. My name is Apollo Justice, attorney at law. And this is how my story begins. Ah, oh, what trial. What a trial. Perfect entry to the game, like 10 out of 10. I just, oh, I fucking love it. I mean, I do have some notes, but I have notes about everything, but, ah, oh, just, ah, oh, it's just the energy of this trial. It's just, oh, it's electric, and it just sets up all the intrigue, all the mystery. It's all right there, and you get these great character moments, you see how much Phoenix has changed, but he also kind of hasn't, but he also, there's just something he's not quite letting on. Apollo's rage is there, and you can feel the, the, the adoration he had for this guy who's it's just kind of been ripped away, and he's confused, but he also knows that... Something's not quite right, and oh, it's just great. I'm, I'm such a fan of this game. I cannot wait to take you all through the rest of it. So, um, yeah, do all the good things. Like, subscribe, comment, share. You know, uh, let me know what you think of the first trial. I haven't heard much from y'all, so any comments, you know, it's all, it's all gooby. And, uh, yeah, I will catch you all on the next one. I hope you like this a little bit longer episode, and, uh... We'll see you in the next one. Stay gay, everyone. Goodbye.